Well, Paul, we, we now know that football's not coming home, but uh, have you effectively come home? Um, it's just, well, it's lovely to be back, I'll put it that way. Um, loved my year here as a player. Um, it's a great club. Um, and it's just a fantastic opportunity now to, to be part of the club again, really. I felt I left a bit too soon for my liking. Um, that's the way football is. And so to be back now, but obviously in a, in a different role, it's, uh, it's just great to be back and, and part of a great club like Portsmouth. Things were going swimmingly for you at the time as a player and, you know, it, it looked bright ahead. But then you get a new manager come in and suddenly it, the, the whole picture changes. Yeah, that's right. You know, how football is, like you say, I settled here well, um, enjoyed playing here and thought, you know, like I say, I had a, had a, had a decent season. Um, but like, like you say, football changes so quickly and you, know, you always know a new manager coming in. He's got his own ideas. He's got his own way of wanting to do things. And, you know, as it turned out, it, it worked out well for, for, for both Cookie and Portsmouth in the end. But like I say, in, in terms of sort of the short term at that time for me, it meant I moved on. But, you know, obviously it worked out well for me as well. So, you know, there's no, no complaints looking back, no hard feelings. That's just the way football is. Well, effectively, you had the last laugh, didn't you? Uh, well, kind of, yeah, kind of. Like I said, I didn't, didn't particularly want to leave, but then by the same token, it worked out well uh, for all parties in the, in the way it worked out. So, yeah, like, it was nice to... It, for, it was nice, obviously, to be part of that promotion at Wimbledon and, and play at Wembley again in, in front of all three of my children. So that was a, that was a lovely day. So it was, uh, yeah, like I say, sometimes you don't, things happen, do happen for a reason, but you don't necessarily know why at the time. And like I say, as it turned out, it turned out all right. And the final you played against Plymouth Argyle at Wembley, Every Pompey fan would have been a Wimbledon fan that day anyway, so it worked out for them. Yeah, I had a, a, a lot of uh, good luck messages uh, from Pompey fans on the, uh, sort of Twitter and what have you. I had a load of messages sort of wishing me good luck. So that was, that was really touching too, you know, that they'd still sort of thought about me. And like I say, we managed to get one back over on Plymouth for, for all the Pompey fans as well as obviously to get our own promotion. just going to bring play back here it's to the frustration of the traveling fans now the last time you played against us you had a bit of a royal battle with brett Pittman. have you seen him yet um yeah he's been a bit sheepish around me brett bless him um no nah, yeah. and then obviously burge finished me off with the overhead overhead kick late on didn't he so it was uh it was just one of, those, one of those strange crazy days but uh yeah no nah, there's no hard feelings because i'm sure that i've uh, dished out a few of my own uh, if you cut some bruises over the years, so you, got, you can't moan when you've got to take them back. When you went up, did you always believe that Pompey would follow shortly afterwards? Yeah, it, it, was only, it felt like it was only a matter of time that Portsmouth were going to get it right. And I think that's why I found it difficult to leave, because I felt like if you had the opportunity of promotion or good times anywhere, it was going to be at a club like this. And like I say, it, you, you kind of knew that it was only a matter of time before the, right, the manager came along and got things right. And obviously Cookie did that. Um, and so that, that was why it was difficult. But, um, it's, as you can see, you know, this club is, is ready to kind of take off again. You know, it's going in the right direction and, you know, the new owners as well and just everything about the place, you can tell it's moving forward again. And, it's, you know, now obviously joining back at the club, it's nice to, to hopefully be part of that momentum. Did a manager like Paul Cook ever let you know what the problem was or does he just say that your services are no longer required? No, he was kind of respectful. He just kind of said it looks like it's going to be difficult for, for you to, to start the season here. Um, it's up to you what you kind of want to do um, and I knew that you know I was 34, 35 and knew that I just wanted to carry on playing and playing football and, and that, so that, that's always been me really I like to be out there I like to be in amongst it and playing games so I find it difficult if I'm not really playing too much um, and yeah he was honest with me can't sort of argue with that and you know although I didn't probably have to leave it, it felt like I'd, I should leave to carry on sort of progressing well you know, still playing in my career really at that stage. So, you know, like I say, it was, it was no hard feelings and, and that's just the way football is. And you could just tell that he wanted to put his own stamp on the squad. And that was and the way it was. As we said off camera, Wimbledon was possibly geographically the best move for you, your children and, and everybody. Yeah, obviously, like I've moved to the area, um, sort of not too far away. Um, and like I say, that Wimbledon's probably perhaps the only other club in, that was just up the other end of the A3. So it, as it worked out, it, was, it worked out pretty well for me. Did they punch above their weight, Wimbledon? Yeah, I think so. I think that even when we got promoted, we had one of the lower budgets in League Two. Um, so, so same in League One, really. They, they know that they're going to be down there in the budget sets. And so every year they've got to overachieve on, on the pitch as a football club. And, you know, they've done that brilliantly for years. And it's just everything about that club that, you know, it's, it's kind of similar to here in terms of the fans are a massive part of that club. Um, 
and the fans are the reason why that club is there, obviously, because it wouldn't even be there if it wasn't for, for the fans starting from scratch and, and taking them up through the pyramids. So, you know, similar to Portsmouth, how the fans kept this place going when it was on its knees and, and uh, yeah, just the whole atmosphere around the place. There's a real, I think it's almost been like the, the recreation of the club really is, is the story. It's such a romantic story now and, and it's nice to be part of that journey for them. You've obviously worked with Kenny Jacket before at Millwall, so you'll know a lot about him. Tell us about your role here. Just um, help the defenders out, um, work, you know, little extras that they might need and just try and impart my knowledge over the years and try and help them, help them progress in their own careers and, and help improve, obviously, the, the goals against Colum. Um, that'll probably be my main, main sort of role here, um, being sort of a couple of days a week and just been used to getting up and go to work and obviously I'm still playing but that, that's part-time training now of an evening so you know I like, like getting up coming in and you know I know that the playing career is coming to an end and I know that it's a big transition period and I'll, I'll be honest I haven't done loads of coaching throughout my career and it's a totally different kettle of fish and I've got an incredible amount to learn so I couldn't think of a better place to learn and a better person to learn from so it's you know I'm really really grateful to Kenny for giving me that opportunity. Obviously you as a player and he as a manager you hit it off with each other. Yeah, it's, it's funny really, I kind of came across him first of all when I was like a, t a, a 10 year old at Watford, um, yeah, playing in the youth team and he was, he was the youth team coach and he was a pretty scary figure then as well, I think he was a, he was a good, obviously, you know, but as, as a, obviously a 10, 10 year old and you hear stories of the sort of, of the old days and, but yeah, and then, and then obviously we came across each other against Mill, uh, when, when he came to Millwall to, to manage Millwall, so that was, you know, it was, it was nice and obviously, you do feel like there was a kind of bond there, um, but what he did at Millwall and what he did for my own career was was unbelievable, really. And I'll always be grateful to that. Really, he brought the good times back to Millwall. Really, we were a little bit we were underachieving at the time, and he came along, got the got the club in order, and, and made us. You know, obviously we got promoted, and just enjoyed a really good good working relationship. And he's a excellent football manager, and a, you know, a great person to learn from. That's quite a fascinating story. That from the the age of ten. Right through your football career, he's been a pivotal, pivotal person. Yeah, you know, sort of pathways have crossed and you're aware of each other. And yeah, so it's, uh, it's funny how things do work out, yeah. And having a Waterlooville, perfect place to play your football. Yeah, that's right. I think that obviously there's, people may have thought that, you know, dropped a couple of levels um, and, and that's possibly the case. But like I say, the opportunity to work here and carry on playing was too good, too good a sort of joint opportunity, really. The whole package was was excellent for me and you know it's a good club really good club good people it was a nice feel we, you know I spoke to Lee Bradbury and went got to know about Haven and obviously two promotions in two years and they're on a really good upward upward momentum themselves so it was nice to be part of that and hopefully I can carry on I love still love playing and love getting out there amongst you know trying to win three points and there's a good group of lads there and hopefully I can be part of a good season sort of trying to establish them in the National League. And of course the first result when you come off on a Saturday you'd be looking for is? is... <laughs> it's Portsmouth indeed and then <laughs> and if it's been a clean sheet or not. <laughs> Brilliant thanks Paul. Cheers John.